Hi, welcome to a cold, miserable evening in Chesterfield. It's a bit of rain, very cold, very windy. So I'm doing the uh, intro, the part two for the air source heat pump now. So in the morning I can just get straight into it to finish off the second part. It's a bit uh, awkward because it's very muddy out there, it's very cold and we have had uh, bits of rain. So it's been really uncomfortable and once I get started I need to keep going because obviously the pond temperature will drop tremendously. So uh, if you're interested in the air source heat pump in the second part, sit back and enjoy.
just a quick update from the inside where I am before I start the next bit. The old heater's there. The bypass is in place. Bypass is in place. Just got it wedged up a bit to give me, uh, give me freedom. The outside of the wall is plated with two holes in for the pipe to go through. And that has been secured on there. And the fence has got two big holes in it and I'm going to go and do all the final connections and then measure it all up. That's part we've got on the outside is I've got to drill the holes to the feet and connect that to that and I've tied the cabling up and then obviously tied your part here. So hopefully we'll get that sorted. So that's it finally in place. I've just got the water running at the moment, checking the, for any leaks or anything. I'll show you how to set the clock. So while it's still switched off, press the M button for the time to flash. Press it again, change the hours. It's currently 14... 54. 14.54? Yeah, 14.55. Sorry about that, 14. So press the end button, change the hours up and down this way, change the hours to that one, press click to finish. And that's done. Switch the unit on, and it says it's heating. And then you just press the, whatever temperature you want it at, 17. Press that to confirm and it's currently 17.1, 17.2 and it's on H for heat. There's three different modes for it. Car read it silent, smart and powerful. Basically what that means is the powerful mode will work on 50 to 100 percent so it'll chuck some power at it to get it up to whatever temperature you need it to be at uh, and it'll get there quickly and it's classed as the most powerful one. The silent one uses 0% to 50% of power so it slowly heats it up and trickles it to whatever temperature you want it at and then the smart one obviously that uses whatever it needs to get it there as sensibly and as economically as possible so close the lid keep that down and now I can just control it from the smart app this app is probably the simplest I've seen you've got the temperature setting in the middle and by moving the wheel around the outside you can adjust the temperature it displays the current temperature just below it then at the bottom left you've got the uh, mode button so you can select which mode it goes into. In the middle you've got the on off button and then on the right hand side you've got a timer where you can set it to come on at any time of day. I can say, sound efficient, environment friendly, durable material, touch and go, easy control. And that's how easy it was to fit it. What we've got before I insulate the pipe, you've got this one on the right with the cables to it. That is the, from the filter outlet, so it comes down there, sweep through a 90, sweep through a 90, 45 into the bottom of the unit, because through the heat exchange, comes out the top union, through the double valve valve there, back through the fence. I've got two bits of wood that I'm going to reduce the, sorry about that, I'm going to reduce the hole sizes on there, down to a close fit once I've insulated it. Then it goes to the shed panel, and there's a metal plate with two holes in that that are 60mm holes, so it's a very tight fit around the plastic, insulation, and then the inside board. It's got those two bits to finish off. I'm going to insulate it now before I get a chance as we've got some snow coming and I'm losing a bit of light. Like I say, it's on the gravel. We've got some chippings, some cement, some sand, and some chippings on the top. We've got clear space all the way around into there. So I'm going to use some of this insulation. I'll show you the insulation I'm going to use. This is the heavy duty insulation I've got, which is good thick foam and then I'm just going to overwrap it at the joints and everything to, uh, with some electrical tape to seal it. So I'll do that now and we'll have a look afterwards. That's me done for today. 
Now it's set up, it's running, it's trickling through at 17.3 degrees at the moment. Got some chippings around it. I've insulated that. I'm going to get some more tape to go around it. It's not quite easy to get to this point, but I'll finish it off. Just got a few wires to uh, tidy up. Those three are off the heat exchange, off the air source heat pump. This one I've not disconnected yet. If the air source heat pump has an issue, I can switch it off there and there, undo the unions and put this in its place. And in my own time, obviously I can climb around the back and shut the air source heat pump off or bypass it. It's just in case it goes down for whatever reason. That's a quick look at uh, what it looks like before I put the uh, plate on the outside, finish it off. Sorry about the noise, I've just got a few bits and bobs lent on the pump and the heater and the tools that I've still got lying about, so I just need to tidy up. Got the fingers crossed, here we go. Well that concludes part two of the air source heat pump. That's my installation of an air source heat pump. Anybody can do it different. It's how it suits their setup and how it uh, fits into what they've got. I've uh, set it up, it's been running a couple of days now and uh, I'm quite pleased with it. The temperature's hardly budged from 17 degrees. So it's doing what it says on the tin and every single word that I read on the uh, website regarding the unit, how to set it up, how to do it, was exactly true and I was a bit worried, a bit apprehensive, but I must admit, I had no need to. I spoke to Simon from AES and he was brilliantly helpful and understanding and he talked me through a few bits and bobs. So at the moment, fingers crossed, everything's fine. The forecast for Chesterfield for the next uh, week is snow from Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I know they always say we're going to get snow and it never, always, it never appears, but uh, fingers crossed, the, the heater's working and it keeps the pond nice and uh, comfortable for the fish. If anyone wants any more information or has any questions, please put them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. And if you're not already subscribed, please, please, please hit the subscribe button. It would be very much appreciated. Thanks a lot for watching. Happy ponding.